What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. Welcome to your stimulus check update, stimulus package and infrastructure update and daily news report for Tuesday, July 13th. Now, yesterday I told you today was going to be a very important day because the CPI data came out this morning. It's already out. I want to break down what is currently being said. Now, one thing that I can tell you on top of the CPI data is that this is what lawmakers are looking at. This is what the Treasury, the Federal Reserve, this is what the Biden administration, this is what everybody is looking at to try to figure out how can they provide the best piece of legislation for the American people. But here's the issue. When the White House and the Biden administration, Democrats are trying to pass these large very large infrastructure packages. The problem is if these aren't paid for, it creates more issues. If there's too much money that goes back into the economy too quickly, we see this big rise in inflation. We see, see supply chain issues. And this is stuff that needs to be addressed quickly. Well, here's what we know. This is what some economists are saying, is that they're asking what happens when people stay at home? What happens when people's incomes stay the same? What happens when products keep going up and they're more expensive to buy? Well, what they're saying is you run out of money. You run out of money much sooner. You have more free time if people are collecting unemployment benefits and that boost. Their wages are pretty much stagnant. Okay, that's understandable. But what happens when their wages don't move, the prices of the products increase, and the person has more time? you have more time, you're going to look into these things and be like, oh, well, I better buy stuff now. Well, this is creating more and more issues down the road. Well, first, in today's update, I want to give you the CPI data first. Then we're going to jump in and discuss what Bernie Sanders had to say yesterday after his meeting with President Biden. I want to talk about the aging population and how they're about to be get hit very hard. And we will address some of the states that are trying to move or placing a move to block uh, COVID vaccine requirements in public schools. So all these things are extremely important. So let's discuss them right now. Again, I just want to thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys are having an incredible week so far. If you could do me a favor, hit that like button. It really does help out the channel. Also consider subscribing so that you never miss an update. So here's what we know so far. Inflation this morning was not supposed to come in as high as it did, yet it came in at 5.4% for June. That's insane. Now that is year over year, okay? What you need to keep in mind at this point is the year over year numbers are going to look so much bigger than what the, many people expect. The reason for this is because of last year. What was going on last year in June, right? What was going on? Well. Many states were completely shut down. The economy was just pretty much in shambles. Nothing was open. Manufacturing was at a standstill. You know, retail wasn't doing so great, right? Restaurants obviously were, many of which were just completely shut down. They couldn't operate at all unless it was, you know, just giving food for takeout. That was it. Well, this is one of the reasons why this number is so large is because obviously now we are almost fully reopened. So that's creating a huge surge in additional spending. Here's how the year over year numbers are driving up inflation. I want to bring this to you because again, this is year over year and some of these are insane. Car rentals are, up, are going to be up if, again. If we look year over year based off the, the month over month numbers that we just saw, car rentals are up 87.7%. Used cars up 45.2%, gasoline up 45.1%, airfare 24.6%. But let me just break this down. Airfare is up. Yeah, last year obviously nobody was flying or very few people were flying. There were limitations there. But on top of that, this is the summer. We've had a year of pretty much nobody was traveling, nobody was going on vacation. Now everyone's like, I'm going on vacation. I'm going somewhere. And so that's why we're seeing airfare up as uh, where it currently is. Moving, moving companies, 17.3%. The reason for this is because a lot of people are realizing it's too expensive to live in my previous city or in my current city. So 
I need to move to the suburbs. I need to get out of this large city. I need to get to somewhere where it's less expensive. So more people are moving. A lot of people are actually uh, combining households as well. And so that's creating a bigger issue also. Hotels are up 16.9%. This is normal because this obviously deals with this reopening phase that we're seeing. Furniture up 8.6, bacon up 8.4, fruit up 7.3, uh, fresh fish is up 6.4, new cars is only up 5.3%, milk is up 5.6%, and rent is actually only up 2.3%, which is not bad. However, I want to bring this to you because in some major cities, in some major cities across the country, what we are seeing is landlords are hitting their tenants with a with a pretty hefty uh, increase in their rent. Some are going up as high as 40% in order for that landlord to make up the, the amount of money that they lost over this past year, year and a half. So just keep that in mind because this is going to continue across the United States, at least according to experts. Now, a lot of this, a lot of these increases are mainly because of consumers finally deciding to open up their wallets. They've been hoarding money, saving money for the past year. Some expect this is only going to be temporary, that we're going to see this change, this, this, uh, you know, this inflationary period. This is, we're going to see inflation. It's going to go up. It's going to be massive. It's looking massive already, but it's also going to drop back down when consumer spending goes back to normal. But there are a lot of people that say that, no, this is not the case. There's supply chain issues, and many anticipate that this will keep going longer than many people expect. Now, I personally expect we are going to see inflation for multiple months. However, until the supply chain issues kind of, you know, get back up to full steam, we get more employees back to work, that's going to help with the supply chain issues. Once we start to see this, then we're probably gonna be a couple months out. So again, we're not seeing it yet. My guess is we're gonna to continue to see inflation, in these, kind, these types of numbers for the next two to three months. But again, once we start to see it level off and get back on track, I believe about two to three months after that, we will see everything kind of go back to normal. Now, speaking of uh, normal, I want to bring up what Bernie Sanders said yesterday. He did have a meeting with President Biden, um, and Sanders said uh, he wants to see a Democrat-only package of no less than $3.5 trillion. Well, he says anything under $3 trillion is just too small, and he says, and I quote, I am going to fight to make that proposal as robust as it can be. Bernie Sanders, yesterday after his private meeting with President Biden, he went on to say, and I quote, what we are trying to do is transformative. The legislation that the president and I are supporting will go further to improve the lives of working people than any legislation since the 1930s. Now, this is key, working people. President Biden, Bernie Sanders, Speaker Pelosi, Senator Schumer, they all want to provide additional relief to the working class people. They want to do this. This is something that Democrats are always for, is for the working people, not for the businesses and the CEOs, it's for the people. But here's something I want to address. Democrats at this point, even though they are in favor of providing some type of relief, assistance, and infrastructure for the working class Americans, even though they're all for this, they cannot agree on the price tag. Even though Senator Sanders and President Biden are working to finalize this bill and come to an agreement at this time, many Democrats are against supporting this bill. Even though President Biden is behind it, they're against supporting this bill just yet because some are saying it is actually too bold and this should be scaled back just a bit. Now, here's the problem. These are more moderate Democrats. The progressives are obviously pushing for more. But are we gonna get more? Chances are, no. Bernie Sanders says he won't support anything less than $3.5 trillion. Previously, he was going for a $6 trillion bill. Well, that got scaled back already. So, we're gonna see what happens, but what we are expecting right now is the next couple of weeks are gonna be filled with different negotiations. Hopefully, next Monday, we're gonna get the finalized legislative text of the bipartisan bill. And the reason for this and again, this is, this is extremely important. 
If we don't see the finalized legislative text, then lawmakers don't know what's gonna be in the bipartisan bill, which means they don't know what to put into the budget reconciliation bill. Meaning, if they don't know what the first step is, they can't make the second one. So we will see what happens, but there are there is some good news, and that is that they are working towards an agreement, and some Republicans at this time say that they do have the numbers. The numbers are there to pass this as a bipartisan bill, but it all depends on if Democrats are planning on moving forward with a Democrat-only budget reconciliation bill following the passing of a bipartisan bill, which Democrats are. So there's a lot of question marks going on right now. Speaking of another question mark, what we know is the aging population is going to get very hit very hard. This is something that I've been saying for quite some time. I get a lot of people here on this channel talking about social security, elderly, how come there's nothing for them? Well, here's what we're seeing. Right now, there has been a small rise in social security benefits. 1.3% the cost of living adjustment. That's, that's pretty low, especially with the, the rise of inflation. So, with no real answers coming out of Washington, the aging population is going to get hit from all sides. Here's what we're seeing. Now, this is not great news. There are roughly 54 million Americans that are over the age of 65, many of which don't have the means to pay for dental, vision, and hearing. Well, if the $3.5 trillion infrastructure package doesn't pass and it gets lowered even more, there's a chance Okay, there is a chance that we don't see an, uh, Medicare get expanded, which means those Americans, those 65 mil or 54 million Americans will continue to have to pay out of their own pocket for vision care, dental care, and hearing. That means they will have less money. But with the rise of inflation, the amount of products that keep going up, food keeps on increasing, right? Away from home food, which means at a restaurant, keeps on increasing. This is not good. This is not good considering some people cannot afford to cook for themselves, cannot afford or even uh, do it because of their, their own skills, right, or their ability at this time. They cannot cook or it's not safe for them to cook. So they are required to pretty much bring in meals, which creates another issue. They can get very expensive. Right now, okay, on top of this, there's, there's a shortage of caregivers, which creates another issue is, okay, if you don't have a caregiver and you cannot afford to uh, you know, bring in food and you can't cook it yourself, well, how do you eat? Do you just eat crackers? Do you just eat snacks? That's not healthy. Right now, there is, legislative, uh, there is legislation out there that's being discussed that would attempt to lure more workers into the, the caregiving uh, field. But some say this is going to be too little too late. And this is causing a huge concern over the aging population and what is, what is in this for as far as the infrastructure package for them. What I can tell you is the 54 million Americans that are over the age of 65, well, that balloons up to like 70 million people by 2030, I believe. So it's coming up. So there's gonna be a lot more uh, older Americans very soon. And this is one of the reasons why some experts are saying that if Medicare is not expanded now, there's a chance it won't get expanded before it balloons up to over 70 million people over the age of 65. So. We will see what happens as we move forward, but this is also one of the reasons why I'm continuing to talk about this because I want you to be uh, aware of what is currently being said, what is currently being proposed for people on social security, what is currently being talked about for Medicare, how the elderly are getting screwed multiple times in many ways from our, from our current government and our government in the past. So it's not looking great, but there, there is some talks, there are some discussions. So as we know more, I promise, I'll fill you in on all those updates. We still don't have an update on the $200 per month social security boost that President Biden promised. Um, you know, even uh, former President uh, Donald Trump, he promised uh, pretty much like a, a voucher to go and pay for medications and, and prescriptions and stuff like that, well, kind of like a coupon card. Well, that never came to fruition either. So, uh, you know, both of them are trying to provide for people on social security, but in the end, it seems like nobody really wants to do anything. 
Now in COVID related news, what we're hearing is states like Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Indiana, Montana, Oklahoma, and Utah have all put legislation in place that would restrict public schools from requiring a vaccine or any documentation of a vaccine. Now, these are not the only states. There's actually a list of about 15 states that are trying to do this as well. However, these are the states that are actually putting into the text and talking about schools and education. So there's actually verbiage that explains that schools and education uh, cannot do this. But the other states, they just talk about how they are not requiring uh, anything for the public. So. We'll see what happens there. By June 22nd, 34 states had introduced bills, uh, you know, into, uh, or it pretty much just introduced bills uh, that would actually limit the requirements of somebody uh, to show proof of vaccine or immunity to COVID. And this was just out in public. So it wasn't essentially just in schools. Well, this is creating a lot of issues. The moves are actually, that are you know, states are making right now, they're actually causing health officials to scramble and try to determine their next best course of action. And they're saying that this could be extremely difficult because as we're getting closer to schools opening back up for the fall, uh, the fall year or whatever, right? What we're seeing is that these health officials are trying to make it as seamless as possible. But the problem is when they say, okay, all school children do not need to wear a mask right? If you are vaccinated. Great. Well, here's the issue. How do you prove that they're vaccinated? How do you prove that they're not? And then on top of that, now we're getting experts that are coming in saying that there is going to be a bullying issue with people that are vaccinated versus those that are not. And so some are going to have to wear a mask. Some will, will be vaccinated and will continue to wear a mask. And so are these people going to get bullied? And how do teachers and, and staff, how do they deal with this? So that's creating another issue is that the, the whole landscape of, of schools and public schools is completely changing. And some say that this is going to be extremely difficult for, uh, for teachers and staff to try to uh, you know, deal with this. So we will see what happens. But what I can tell you right now is this fight is not over. Even though we may be seeing a, you know, uh, you know, COVID is coming to an end is what a lot of people are saying. Well, I just want to tell you it's, it's not. About 11 days ago, we were seeing the average, the seven day average was right about 10,000 cases per day. Well, this morning, the, the seven day average is now at 23,000. So yeah, in less than two weeks, we more than doubled our case count. Now doubled sounds really, uh, really extreme extreme right but here's here's the thing it is somewhat extreme but at the same time we did double right we went from 10,000 to 23 it's not a huge jump because we've been up over 100,000 uh you know in the past but again this is our reopening this is our transition so as we start to transition things are going to change but as we see these additional changes i promise i'll fill you in all the latest news and updates one thing i just want to leave you with is there is still talks on this fourth stimulus check with all this CPI data that has come out, there has been a couple lawmakers that are pushing for more stimulus. And they're saying that the American people need more stimulus, they need more direct payments, they need security with unemployment, because right now, wages and income are looking less and less likely. So because of this, they want to see more from the federal government. Well, if this happens, I promise I will break that news to you as quickly as possible. But as of right now, this is what we know. So just want to thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Consider subscribing and I'll see you guys on the next one.